So tier lists have become kind of a staple in the YouTube community and the Twitch community and just the gaming community in general. I really like the idea of tier lists because it kind of organizes people's thoughts into what they feel is the best or what they feel is the most viable. And I think that applies to Dead Cells too. And what's funny about tier lists is that uh, it's been around for a long time, especially in fighting games and especially you can see that in like the Smash community. But you didn't really see it that much with a lot of other things. And now it's kind of like you get a tier list for everything. It's kind of weird. Like I know there's that famous one, some someone, I don't know who made it on like fast food uh, tier list. Someone made like a YouTuber's tier list, which I thought was pretty funny. And in general, like, people are just kind of going all over the place with tier lists. Uh, and this applies to Dead Cells too, because with Dead Cells, what you end up with is a lot of different weapons, a lot of different builds, a lot of different skills, mutations, etc. And so what ends up happening is that some weapons are more viable than others. And just a disclaimer, this is all my opinion only, and there are going to be some weapons that either I haven't used enough or that I don't really like that much, but other people seem to like. And I'm going to try to keep that in account while making this list. Um, and if you disagree, that's totally fine. You can always leave a comment letting me know, you know, why a certain weapon is worse or better or something like that. I wanted to start off with the melee weapons. And the melee classification is still kind of a little weird because, let's say, for example, we have the Valmont Whip and the Wrenching Whip. These are both considered melee weapons, but the electrical whip isn't. And what was weird was when I went on a run with the Valmont whip uh, earlier today, I didn't get the melee mutations in intact. So like the Predator, for example, it didn't come on for me and I wasn't really sure why. But that could just be the fact that I was playing with owls. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but you know, th I think uh, that's also important to note is Classification of melee weapons isn't an exact science. Like, even Tentacle is a ranged melee weapon, so the initial strike is ranged, but then when you hit the enemy again, it's melee. So, uh, certain weapons can have a weird classification, but we're kind of working with what we have now. So, this is as of uh, 1.4, September 28, 2019 is when I'm recording this, and uh, these are the classifications. I wanted to start off with the Assassin's Dagger which is right now one of the best weapons in the game, and it recently got a change to uh, Brutality and Tactics. So let's kind of go here and find the Assassin's Dagger right here. So 100 DPS, uh, it's kind of weak, but 300 critical DPS, which is massive. It's more than almost everything. A Nutcracker gets uh, high crit. Um, let's see. Impaler gets the same crit. War Spear gets a similar damage. It's more powerful than the Broadsword. The Broadsword's noted for being extremely powerful. So the crit uh, damage for Assassin's Dagger is really high. Internal name, Backstabber, I like that. Uh, so it's a one-two hit combo per 0.5 seconds. So that means it's extremely quick. And it also means you're going to get a lot of damage off very, very quickly against enemies. And this saw a significant change in 1.4 by being rebranded to Tactics. And now with the, what the devs wanted to accomplish with 1.4 is to really establish melee tactics. So that saw light speed, that saw a tentacle, it even saw a boost in certain weapons. So And Assassin's Dagger is one of them. Other weapons also include a Meat Skewer. What else is now also Tactics? Let's see... Uh, shrapnel Axe is already Tactics, but they've been uh, Brutality Tactics for a while. Cursed Sword, Sadist Stiletto became Brutality Tactics in 1.3. Frantic Sword's always been part Tactics. Uh, so just different weapons have been rebranded. And Assassin's Dagger, what it can now do is you can pair it up with Wolf Trap, you can pair it up with Double Cross Vematics, Heavy Turrets, Owls. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with it now. Uh, you can even pair it up with different bows. Like, I don't use ice bow, but I know that it can be used with ice bows. Um, it can be used with the magic missile, or it can even be used with the power of technic. So there's a lot of different uses for it. It's incredibly powerful, and it's one of the best weapons in the game. So right off the bat, we're going to keep that over in S tier. 
And next what we have is we're going to take a look at the broadsword. And so the broadsword, where is that? It's over here. I saw a change in 1.1 where it went from pretty slow and kind of unusable to extreme, to not extremely fast, but pretty fast for a s s intentionally slow uh, survival group, uh, survival melee weapon. I know that's kind of a mouthful to say, but uh, the point is it's pretty powerful. And let's take a look over at the broadsword. So it's extremely powerful on the first hit, and the base. Uh, the base DPS is 273, but that's one strike. The combo damage, which is pretty slow, it's a, it's a strike on the side, it's a strike above, and then it's a strike downwards. Excuse me, it's a strike upwards and then a strike downwards. And the strike downwards gets you the most amount of damage. So right here we can see that. So uh, the, the first hit is 80, second hit is 135, and the third hit is 400. And, uh, keep in mind, these two hits are always critical, and that does line up with the instinct of the master arms uh that mutation so if you want to use that in your run you can feel free to use that uh pretty good against bosses honestly uh it's very powerful it is slow but if you run like a cudgel or like a ramparts or something that you know kind of keeps the enemy at bay or even like a wolf trap then you should be good to go so broadsword i'm going to keep an a only because of the fact it's uh, still very slow and you kind of have to build around it instead of it just being like an automatic pickup and I'm going to kind of go with these out of order just based on what I feel like talking about. Just because doing it in alphabetical order seems kind of boring to me. Uh, and let's take a look at the Seismic Strike next. And this is a weapon I was so down on in 1.2. I thought it was one of the worst uh, weapons in the game. And I had done tier lists for almost every iteration of Dead Cells. I did a couple for 1.0. 1.0 I didn't play much because I wasn't a big fan of it. So I didn't really uh, do a tier list for that. Uh, 1.2, I started one, then I kind of stopped because I got a little bored and sidetracked with school and work and all that. And 1.3, I didn't really bother because 1.4 came out so quickly. So with Seismic Strike, what it does is it'll hit an enemy, lock it in place, and then it's a three-hit combo. So it'll hit the enemy, lock it in place, it'll do an upward strike, and then it'll do a jumping downward strike. And that jumping downward strike creates a shockwave that'll immobilize... Uh, the all enemies that are affected by that shockwave. And it's not very powerful for the record. Uh, if we take a look at it, it's only 131 DPS. And let's take a closer look at that. It's The base combo damage is 250, and the shockwave is uh, 30. Or, yeah, 30 total, but 20 on the last one. So it doesn't shockwave doesn't actually do anything. But it still works for what it needs to do. I think it's a solid weapon. I think... My initial thoughts on it were so negative because I expected it to do more damage. Uh, it is very, very slow, though, in terms of that last strike. So you definitely have to build around it, and it doesn't have enough power for what it should be doing. But that being said, its effects are solid. I think it's, overall, it's a pretty okay weapon. It's not great, but it's not bad either, and I'm going to put that in B tier. And so this list is going to kind of going according to what I think are weapons that are phenomenal and they're must-haves. And that would be like the S tier, like weapons you can absolutely build an entire run around without any work. Uh, a tier, I would say, is slightly below that. So weapons that are still great, but need some kind of, uh, not leveraging, but kind of you need to tweak it a little bit in order to satisfy that weapon. B tier are weapons that are normally pretty good but they knew, do, you, do need a little bit of adjustment, they, they need a little bit of, um, what should I call it, they need a little bit of kind of help. So, and C tier are weapons that have certain niches, but otherwise are kind of underwhelming. D tier uh, is weapons that are supposed to be good, but are ultimately not. And NA is just weapons that I can't really apply a rating to, and I'm going to kind of do that right now. The Rusty Sword, obviously, no, it's, no, not D tier, it's uh, not available. Rusty Sword isn't terrible for a starting weapon, honestly, but it, I can't really rank it because it's a starting weapon. And the other one I'm going to put here is Curse Sword, because a Curse Sword is very, very powerful, and I know Curse Sword runs are kind of the in thing right now, but 
it's hard to rank it because it's wild, very powerful. The caveats that you get hit and you die. And I put it in C tier in 1.0, but that didn't feel right because on its own in a vacuum, it's probably like an A tier weapon, but it sits properly in S tier or uh, in a NA. Uh, so next, let's take a look at the rapier. So the rapier is actually a very powerful weapon if you get the critical damage. Otherwise, it has pretty pathetic damage. So the rapier, actually, where is that? Here it is. So when you roll, you get the crit. And that's basically all that is. So it's 268 when you get the crit damage. Extremely powerful. But... 106 base DPS for the combo, or 90 for the bait for the combo. So 30, 20, 20, 20. It's terrible. But when you roll and you do a and you do that combo, you will get the crit. So it's a four hit combo. It's pretty quick. Uh, and when you roll, you'll get the crit for all four of those shots. So you got 96, 44, 44, 44. That adds up to 228. Uh, pretty solid damage overall. But that it's hard to get the uh, crits in certain situations it's awful against mobs it's decent against bosses i would say uh, outside of uh giant and conjunctivious it's pretty okay against bosses i would say you can pair it with like a hakuto's bow and then increase the damage output but otherwise it's a little underwhelming and keep that in c tier uh next we're going to take up the tw uh twin dagger twin daggers and the twin daggers saw a significant change in 1.3 where they went from pretty unusable and slow to pretty fast and one of the better weapons in the game and right now it the damage has kind of remained the same over time so uh with twin daggers which are always unlocked by the way so you don't need to like go uh do some crazy blueprint extraction uh it, you get a base combo of the two of 255 and the last hit is always going to be critical so let's say for example you you are dealing with a uh, Inquisitor or something. Uh, the first hit's going to deal 30, so that's going to take some chunk. 40, 45 on the second hit, it's going to take a bigger chunk. And then the uh, 180 is usually going to knock enemies out. And if it doesn't knock enemies out, that means that your uh, build is probably underpowered at the moment and you need to get some stats. Uh, but it does breach them for a quick second, so you can come back and hit them. But overall, it's pretty powerful. Uh, there's not much wrong with it. I would just say that it's not great at dealing with mobs. Uh, with elites, you kind of have to have build support, so like fire grenades and things like that. And I'll keep that in the A tier. I'll keep that slightly below the broadsword. And the other thing I want to say with this uh, tier list is that weapons to the left of the row are going to be the higher rated ones. So like broadsword is the leftmost. And weapons that are not as good, probably low, low tier but still in that tier, I'm going to keep on the right side. So Twin Daggers I have below the Broadsword here. And next I would say the Torch. Uh, the Torch is pretty great because it hasn't changed at all since 1.0. It's a three-hit combo. It strikes the enemy to the side and then uh, upwards and then downwards. And it leaves fire stacks on the enemy and on the ground. So you get double fire stacks. So paired with oil it becomes a pretty unstoppable killing machine. And you compare this with melee, you compare it with open wounds, if you get that 60% of bleed affix, you, you can do a lot of different things with this weapon. You can also pair it with it, something like a Hakuto's bow, or you can pair it with an Alchemic kind of Carbine. Granted, you can pair pretty much anything with a Hakuto's bow and you'll be fine. But point is, Torch is one of the best weapons in the game. I don't even need to look at the damage because the damage is, it's, you know, it's average damage, but it's, what it does is extremely good. So we're going to keep that in S tier. We're going to keep it below Assassin's Dagger because Assassin's Dagger at its peak is possibly the best weapon. Possibly. And we're going to take a look now at the Giant, the Giant Killer. And the Giant Killer was pretty overpowered in 1.2. It was extremely powerful. It would knock out entire bi entire biomes just by you know existing because of how powerful it was and with elites and bosses oh my god it was so good um and granted you know with 1.4 it's still amazing against bosses 
and against elites. But in regular biomes, it's not good anymore. So with Giant Killer, which was released in 1.2, by the way, it's 127 DPS. And it's a five-hit combination, I believe. A four-hit, I'm sorry. And, you know, it's not a bad base combo damage for 335. It's actually pretty good. The problem is, it's a really long combo. And it takes a lo And that fourth hit, you're jumping up in the air, and enemies can uh, attack you in that while. It's not a good combination. And, but, caveat, against Giants and Elites, 1,139 the base combo damage. And the last two hits do 450 and 480, respectively. It's unbelievable against bosses. It still is. And if you pair it with something that can take out uh, uh, regular um, mobs, then you should be good to go. Like something like an Impaler, which does that job pretty nicely, like a Wrenching Whip, uh, even like a Belmont Whip, if you want to go all ranged. If you want to go uh, Survival, then you can do something like a Heavy Crossbow, or you can do... Uh, what else? What's another good one? Maybe like a marksman bow that takes out uh, and wipes out entire mobs. Um, you know, overall, it, it's great at its gimmick, but otherwise, it's not. It has some severe flaws. I'm gonna keep it in the bottom of A tier. I think it's still really good. It just needs to, you know, kind of, you know, I would like to see it improved. So maybe instead of 127 based DPS. Uh, for its regular attacks, I would maybe increase that to 150, get a slight boost on that. And now we can take a look at the flint. And the flint is a weapon I still really, really don't like. Um, I've said that numerous times in uh, Dead Cells, and, uh, the Dead Cells, uh, what's it called, the subreddit, and then the uh, and then certain streamers that I watch, I've talked about how I really, really hate the flint. But everyone else seems to like it but me. So, the flint's interesting, though. It has a very interesting gimmick. So, you hold attack to inflict a critical hit and, and create a flaming trail. So, it's, it's what the concierge does with creating that little shockwave. And it's 267 uh, critical DPS, 70 on the shockwave damage. Uh, 160 for the regular attacks, which is not bad whatsoever. What I would like to see out of this weapon is for the crit damage to increase significantly. I would like to see it increase to maybe 300 or so. Uh, 300 to 320 uh, base DPS for the uh, critical. And that's mainly because I feel like it doesn't do enough damage right now. And the Flaming Trail, I think, needs to be increased to about 115 or so. I just think it's a little underpowered right now. Uh, but, you know, you I know people will disagree with me on that. It is good for clearing up mobs, I will say that. But at the same time... I just, I, I can't in all good faith keep it in like an A tier, because I know a lot of people really enjoy it. Uh, but I think, despite my severe dislike of it, I am going to keep it in the B tier. I'm going to keep it in the bottom of B tier, but it's still going to be in B tier, because I know that it has a lot of fans. And the Flawless is a weapon that I really want to like. I just really want to like it. But 15 seconds for a cooldown is terrible. And the thing is, it's Dead Cells, and you're going to get hit a lot. And if it was a tactics weapon, then I could, you know, have ambient damage from owls, and then it could be pretty good. But the fact that it's Brutality Survival means that, you know, you're going to be dodging enemies all the time. So I would say it's best as a survival weapon. It's best with paired with something like Ramparts, so you have that shield around you. So you don't get hit for a good amount of time. Or even like the Force Shield, which gives you a little bit of vulnerability. Or invulnerability, excuse me. And the crit DPS is ridiculous. It's uh, 270. And it's a 3-hit combo. It's a fairly fast 3-hit combo. It's, I think it's the fastest um, melee survival weapon out there. And that combo is 620. 240 for regular, which is terrible for 3-hit combination. For a weapon that's slow. So other weapons, I'll kind of say, two, oh, 240 is a good thing. But that's because those weapons are quicker. So you can get more damage off. But the Flawless is, you know, it's still a melee survival weapon. So it's still pretty slow. And, it's, you know, 15 seconds is a long time for a cooldown. If you And the chances are you're getting hit against a boss. So what do you do then? 
you know you just gotta you know attack for 15 seconds not do any damage and for something like the giant which goes through multiple uh which has the charges on its hands and can do some devastating attack attacks after it gets three charges on its hands you know you don't really want to deal with that and that's just one example but uh flawless i'm gonna keep at c tier i'm gonna Keep it away from D tier because I don't think it is necessarily that bad to the point where it needs to be all the way down there, but I am keeping it in C tier. But speaking of D tier, let's talk about the Meat Skewer. And I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but I don't think it's good. It's I think it's a terrible uh, melee tactics weapon. It's okay as a brutality weapon, but there's so many more options that are better than this. And I think all of these weapons that I put in so far are better than it. The issue comes down to the fact that the combo just doesn't do enough damage. Let's take a look at it. Meat Skewer was great in 1.0. I put it in A tier, and it had a great combination. I really liked it. Uh, but the base combo damage is 305, which is good. And it's a fast weapon, so it's pretty good. But the first, second, and third hits are terrible. Um, and then it'll go through the enemy, and then it goes through the enemy again for the fourth hit, and goes through the enemy for the final hit, which is the fifth hit. And that's usually what knocks enemies out. And you actually do have control over where you can uh, do these hits and it is pretty decent at mob control but it's just not powerful enough and the issue is if you're playing this on melee tactics it's gonna be really difficult like you have to have a lot of help with ambient damage like trip like turrets traps uh owls things like that it doesn't really do what it needs to be doing i think if death orb was still a uh, tactics skill. You could pair it with that and kind of use your meat skewer in conjunction with the death orb, and that'll do a great job against mobs. But for what it's supposed to be doing, it doesn't do a great job at it. And if we're going brutality, there's so many more better options. So I'm keeping it in D tier. It's probably very controversial, but again, this is just more opinion based, and this is my experience with meat skewer. I've tried many, many times to run a melee tactics build. And just a regular melee brutality build with it. It just it just doesn't work for me. Uh, and next, let's talk about the wrenching whip, which I had an S tier in 1.0, but I think other weapons have passed it since. But it's still very very good. Um, it does a crit damage on the third strike, which is a kick. So the crit doesn't really have range, but it still does an excellent job of bringing in, grouping enemies together. So let's say you have a mob of like four enemies. Use the wrenching whip, and if they're all clustered together, you can all bring them in together, and you kind of stun them for a second, and it'll pull them towards you, and then it'll inflict a critical hit on that third strike. So the third strike doesn't have a lot of range, but if you group enemies together, it will um, hit all the enemies, or most of the enemies at least. And the combo damage is 225, which is pretty low, but keep in mind that's still fast. It's a very fast combination. So, and the uh, third hit is 140, so it always crits. And if you get something like 100% to poison and inflicts poison on the enemies, you're, that second and third hit becomes even more powerful. I think it's a very, very good weapon still. I just don't think it's S tier, but I'll put it at the top of A tier. So I still think it's very, very good. And I have an extra giant uh, killer here, so I'm not going to uh, make use of that. Um, so the next one I wanted to talk about is a weapon that has seen a lot of changes, but has improved a lot since uh, 1.0, and that's the Nutcracker. And Nutcracker was unusable in 1.0, I would say. I think it was terrible, it didn't really do what it was supposed to be doing, and it was slow. It was like the broadsword, just slow weapon that didn't do what it was supposed to be doing. But with the changes in 1.1 and beyond, now it inflicts a critical damage if the enemy is frozen, immobilized, or stunned. So that works great with Wolf Trap, it works great with Stun Grenade, it works great with Cudgel, um, and those, those are like the main three, but it also has an affix, it's a rare affix, but you can like stun the victim as well, and it does have good range, so you can hit multiple enemies with it. It's overall solid, it's still slow, and the base combo doesn't necessarily do a lot of damage, but at the end of the day, I still liked using it. I got a win with it recently, and I actually do recommend using it not as a brutality weapon necessarily but i would use that as a survival melee weapon and because of that i'm going to keep it at the top of b tier 
So let's move on to the Impaler. So what the Impaler does, <clears throat> this one right here, what it does is that it will hit multiple enemies at once. It kind of works like a skewer a little bit. And if an enemy is against the wall, it'll do crit damage. So uh, let's take a look at what that damage will look like. Where is the Impaler? Uh, it drops by the Concierge actually on the fourth kill. So if you kind of keep running through Concierge, eventually you'll get that. And so it's base, you know, 117 damage. Uh, but it is 300 uh, damage when you hit them against the wall. So you just keep smacking them against the wall. And it pushes enemies a little bit as well. So uh, a, a build that I really like is Spartan Sandal and Impalers of Spartan Sandals. Or a War Javelin, like, we'll pin them against one. You can use the Impaler to just kind of keep smacking them against it. Works really well with the melee mutation as well. And I think it's a pretty solid weapon overall. I think the base damage is a little low. Uh, so, And there's not a lot of situations where you can grab enemies against the wall. Um, I know Timekeeper is one. I know Concierge is one, I think. And I think uh, the Collector is another. So I think those are three bosses that can be hit against the wall. And it's pretty good at dealing with mobs. But you have to have a pretty powerful one. And overall, I think it's pretty solid. And I'm going to uh, put this at the top of B tier. Uh, I think it's really good. I just don't think it's uh, quite A material. But I think it's, you know, it's a solid weapon. And uh, so next is the Frantic Sword, which hasn't changed at all since 1.1. It's actually the original uh, melee tactics weapon before Melee Tactics really got that buff in 1.4. <clears throat> so it was like the only thing you could really use Ripper with back when it existed. And what it does is, if you're at below half health, uh, where is it? It should be up here somewhere. There it is. Uh, if it uh, comes at, if you're below half health, it'll do critical damage, and the critical damage is 285. And that means that it's incredibly powerful. So... And it's a pretty fast combination as well. <clears throat> and it, unlike the Assassin's Dagger, you don't need to be behind an enemy. You can be out in front and you can do your half uh, You can do uh, crazy amounts of damage. It's dropped by the Kamikazes. Um, you typically will be getting this weapon fairly quickly because there's a lot of Kamikazes in Dead Cells. I think it's really good overall. I think the caveat of it being below half health, getting the crit damage is... Kind of works against it because tactics especially <clears throat> if you're below half health you really can't be taking any hits and if you're at brutality then yeah you can run a bulky build and i think it works to an extent but not quite as solid but i do want to try a run with it yet uh right now maybe after this video i'm gonna try a run with it I think it's good though. I think it's really good overall. So I'm gonna keep it in A tier below wrenching whip, but above broadsword. And what should we do? I would say swift sword. And swift sword is very interesting because it's one of those weapons that you need to build a run around uh, because you need weapons that can give you like that uh, increases movement speed, affix, or velocity or something like that. <clears throat> But it works really well for what it is. And I've actually gotten... Uh, I got a win with it in 1.3. I, I really loved that run. And let me see if I can actually pull it up. I don't know if I can pull it up on here. But let's see if I can do that. Winning builds. I keep track of all my builds. So I should be able to pull this up. <clears throat> let's drag that over here. Yeah, so this was the build. So I had a legendary rampart with a uh, swift sword that poisoned, a uh, knife dance, and powerful grenade. I think I went for the extra health. That's why I have a, a plus two powerful grenade. But you can see poisons the enemy, and these two do bonus damage to poison, and crits do 20%, which doesn't really matter against bosses. But, you know, I still had the rampart for that. So, you know, this was pretty solid, I would say. Uh, so it gets a speed boost when you are going fast, and you go fast by killing a bunch of enemies at once. So velocity is very, very useful with this build, and it's a quick combination, and 208 critical DPS is pretty good for a fast combination. 
I'm going to put this at the top of B tier just because uh, it's not as great versus bosses. It's not like a bad uh, weapon by any means against bosses. 138 DPS is still pretty good, but you're not getting a speed boost against bosses for sure. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next. Uh, Spike Boots, an another weapon that hasn't really changed since uh, 1.0, and the premise has always been you kick an enemy while they're attacking, it's going to do critical damage. It also kicks bombs as well. That's important to note. And 297 critical DPS, uh, really, really high. And I've had this in A tier since 1.0, and it's going to remain in uh, A tier in 1.4. The question is where? I would put it below the broadsword, but above the twin daggers, probably. And let's talk about the Valmon Swift, because this is a weapon that I had in E tier in 1.0. And over the iterations of Dead Cells, it's gotten better and better and better. And I think it's actually reached its peak with 1.4, where it's now a tactic scaling weapon. It's now Brutality Tactics instead of Brutality Survival. And I think the change was good, because I just had a run earlier today where I no-hit every single boss with the double Valmount Swift and double Owls. Yeah, the Owls were doing a lot of damage, but Valmount Swift was doing insane amounts of damage too. And I had 40 Tactics, so I couldn't really afford to get hit. But it gave me a lot of good damage and the getting the crits is pretty easy there is a little bit of a learning curve to this weapon in terms of where to stand but once you figure that out it's pretty unstoppable it can oko most enemies i'm actually going to put this in a tier i'm going to put this above the frantic sword and below the wrenching whip though so you got both uh wrench weapons in a tier and i actually think that wrenching whip would be pretty cool as a uh, survive as a uh tactics weapon i know there's a lot of weapons right now that are brutality tactics i i would like to see wrenching whip uh be classified as that and speaking of which i want i really think that the um balanced blade should be wherever it is did i lose the balance blade oh here it is so the balance blade uh interesting weapon basically if you get uh 10 hits in a row then it's going to uh, get critical hits. And the critical hits are... Let's take a look. So it's a one, uh, one six-hit combo per 1.46 seconds. So incredibly fast um, weapon. It's pretty like weak, but once you get the crits going, then you start racking up damage quickly. So the base DPS looks like it's at 89, and the combo is the combo the six hit combo is 130, and that turns into 260 after uh, 10 consecutive hits. I do want to try a run with this sometime. The problem is it's extremely weak, and 278 is not bad for a base DPS, but well 139 to 278, so it does depend. Um, and it's so, like, so let's, let's actually take a look at this. So damage increases by 10% per hit until 100% crits after 10 consecutive hits. So when you first start off the combo, it's going to be weak, and then it gets more and more powerful as you progress. So that's why there's that range right here. So you can end up with a max of 406, which is really good, and it's a fast weapon. Problem is, is that getting to 10 hits is difficult um, because you, you do need a lot of help with this weapon. But it's not bad overall, I would say. I think that it could stand to improve a little bit. I'd like to see it be a tactics weapon as well, just because of how fast it is. I'd like to see it be a little more powerful as well. Maybe not a, by a lot. Like, instead of 130 being the base combo damage, maybe like 150. Just slightly more powerful. But I think overall it's okay. It's not great by any means, so I'll put it at the bottom of B tier. And uh, now we have the Shrapnel Axes, which I just finished uploading a video uh, for the Shrapnel Axes. It's Shrapnel Axes and Tentacle, so I'll get to Tentacle next. And Shrapnel Axes has dual purpose, so it has a ranged function and it has a melee function. The melee uh, does more damage than the range, so let's take a look, because that is a little bit kind of complicated to explain. I don't have Vorpan on here. Let's uh, let's go download Vorpan real quick. How do I not have Vorpan in here? That's 
That's embarrassing. Not really, but I didn't realize that I didn't have Vorpan. So let's add that to my Dead Cells. Fucking thumbnails, melee. And let's see if we can edit, I think that's how we do this. Yeah. Okay. And then we can add another one. Choose file. Dead cells. Weapon thumbnails. Melee. And Vorpan. And let's submit. Cool. And it's saved as well. So, alright. So we'll talk about Vorpan later. So, Shrapnel Axe is basically... The extra hit is the ranged one. Right? So... The first hit's 45, then 50, 55, 70, and then final hit's 180. So the final hit's really, really powerful. And <clears throat> I think that adds up to 400. I don't know. Someone can do that math for me. But it's uh, pretty powerful as a straight melee weapon. Uh, a range, it's 50, 20, 30, 60, and adds up to 180. And then that's 325. Pretty powerful. So... The thing about Vorpan is that, you know, you can combine it with something like uh, Wolf Trap, and then you can stay away and then just keep doing that 5-hit combination. The problem with um, uh, Shrapnel Axe is really the only problem is that the 5th head is extremely slow, so you leave yourself vulnerable to, be, to uh, get hit. And I've never tried this weapon in a Brutality setting, but Melee Tactics, it was phenomenal. And I will have that build uh, up by the time I'm done with this video. And it was shrapnel axes and tentacle, and I was using shrapnel axes most of the time. Like it works really well, like especially the first few hits. And you combine that with initiative and predator, got a great weapon. But but it does have that slight flaw, so I'm gonna keep it in A tier, but it's gonna be the very top of A tier because I think it's quite good. And speaking of tentacle, uh, tentacle runs a dual purpose, so it will grab an enemy. And then as you go towards it, if you press it again, right right as you hit the enemy, then um, it'll do critical damage. And it actually will go through enemies. So it, you can clear out entire mobs like that. And that video that I that I was talking about will have that. We'll have several instances of that. Now, 219 critical DPS. Think about doing 219 critical DPS, you know, scaled up for level and uh, how much you have in your main stat and all that. Think of how much damage you'll be doing to enemies. It's a phenomenal weapon. It works in both a range setting and a melee setting. Um, you can use a range on a boss and get the critical hit and then roll past, a, past them. And it's good for getting yourself out of situations. Um, it's good for uh, grabbing them, kind of stunning them a little bit. It doesn't work close range, so you have to be a, at least a few pixels away. Um, overall, fantastic weapon, though. I'm going to keep this in S tier, um, below the torch. And, uh, Vorpan, everyone's a uh, meme weapon for 1.4. So, when Death Cells hit in 1.0, they had a trailer for the, uh, frying pan. And everyone was asking, where's the frying pan weapon? Oh, they added it in 1.4. In 289 critical DPS is absolutely nuts, by the way. And 161 regular DPS is not bad. Um, it's a, I think it's a three hit combo, I want to say. Four hit combo, excuse me. And the combo DPS is 225 and 405 for the crit. It's really, really good. Like, the only thing is, you know, it's not as good if you're, um, towards the back of an enemy. And a lot of times you're going to be in the back, but if you have a shield with you, then you should be fine. Like, and I, I think it's solid. I don't think it's as powerful as other weapons or you know, or that its gimmick is as good. It's basically a reverse Assassin's Dagger. But Assassin's Dagger works because it's extremely powerful and fast. Vorpan is not as powerful and not as fast. But I do think it's an A-tier weapon. And to keep this above the Valmont Whip. Below the Wrenching Whip, above the Valmont Whip. And I think that's an appropriate spot. Uh, Oil Sword. I think it's the best melee weapon in the game. It's so easy to get fire damage. Firebrands, uh, Fire Blast, uh, Flame Turrets, uh, Fire Grenades, even like a Hukuro's Bow or an Alchemic Carbine that shoots flames, which it's a rare affix, 
But over course of Dead Cells, if you have custom mode, you're probably going to get something like that. And, you know, you double the damage of fire because uh, oil sword spreads oil. And you get crits on um, burnt enemies. It's a lot of damage that you're going to be doing. 224 critical DPS, which doesn't seem like a lot. But again, you have to think about that in context. So you have a lot of fire going towards an enemy. And you have, you know, a kind of slow but kind of fast combination at the same time. Like, it's really, really good. I, I highly recommend, you know, trying this out. I mean, it works with only one type of build, which is a fire build. But given how easy it is to spread fire, even smashing down on enemies can get fire. Like, it's, it's so good. Like, I'm... Always impressed by how strong this weapon is. <clears throat> Shouldn't be nature. But top of best here, I, I think since 1.3, it's been the best melee weapon in the game. And we go from an S tier weapon in 1.4 after being, you know, a C tier for the other iterations of Dead Cells to a weapon that was S tier in 1.0 for me, and it's kind of dropped a little bit, and that's the shovel. The problem with shovel is that it hasn't changed at all. And... It doesn't do a lot of damage. It reflects bombs, but it doesn't do much damage on the reflection for the bombs. I think as far as melee survival weapons go, I think Nutcracker, I think Broadsword are way better. I think even Seismic Strike is better. Um, it's better than Flawless, but you know. Um, I think it does a good job of hitting enemies above, so like Kamikaze Bats and Buzz Cutters and Super Flies, things like that. It does a good job stunning enemies. It has a lot of good qualities to it, but it doesn't necessarily have the power. I'd like to see this weapon get some power in 1.5. Or whatever they decide to do to Dead Cells next. Because 144 for a 3-hit combination is not great. Like, I mean, the base combo damage is 230, but like that's still not great for a weapon that's a little slower. I'd like to see that number be around maybe 270 to 300, like in that range. Um... So I'm going to put this above Flint, but below Seismic Strike and uh, Nutcracker. And now we have the Swift Sword. Or not Swift Sword, the Spite Sword. So it has two functions. The first is that you get a crit if you're cursed. And the second is that you get a crit if you've recently taken a hit. So what people commonly do is pair it with, uh, with the Frontline Shield. You hold it up. And you take damage if you hold the shield up and not parry a, uh, a projectile or a, mele or a melee attack by an enemy. And then you'll be getting crits for 8 seconds. The problem is that 8 seconds isn't really a long time. And you're not going to be getting 60 in any biomes because of that. Also, the combination's really bad. So it's 2 hits, 2 really solid hits. And then kind of a pathetic kick that doesn't do any damage. And then a final strike, which does a lot of damage. So the third hit gets you 10. The kick's really bad. I can kick enemies off ledges, but like, how often is that going to be the case for anything? I, I really don't like it. Um, if that third hit wasn't there, I would probably put this a lot higher up on this tier list. But because of that third hit in the combo, uh, I have to place it in C tier. Because it's really hard to uh, get runs going. I'm going to put this below the Rapier, but above Flawless. And next is going to be the Hayabusa Boots. Um, not to be confused with the Hayabusa Gauntlets and the Hayabusa Spiked Boots. So the Hayabusa Boots are um, basically it's a five hit combination. The last hit Creates an area of effect, blows enemies away. Um, they can hit walls and basically get smacked to death. You get this in Forgotten Sepulcher um, after you defeat those two uh, Dark Tracker elites at the ending. And then you grab the blueprint for that. Where is that thing? Right here. So 128 DPS may seem like a not so good damage, but then the base combo damage is 176, but the the AOE damage, area of effect damage is a lot. And it reflects grenades and pushes enemies away, 
and inflicts a lot of damage if enemies are hit against a wall. There's a lot of opportunities to do that in Dead Cells, and it's good mob control as well. Uh, I recently got a win with it. <clears throat> Solid overall. Um, little weak, though. So I'm going to put an A tier. Uh, below the... I put it... Actually, at the bottom. I put it above Giant, giant Killer. <laughs> And now let's move on to the Blood Sword. So I recently got a Blood Sword win for the first time. And Blood Sword is very interesting because it doesn't do a lot of damage. But if you stack with the Hukudo's Bow, you get greater damage and you get um, the bleed stack at the same time. So if you get if you pair this weapon with the uh, enemies nearby will bleed, you can start knocking out um, clusters of mobs like very, very quickly. Um, it's, pr it's a pretty fast combination overall. Um, you get it, it's like the first blueprint that you get. You get it when you when it drops from zombies on the first kill. I think that it's a little weak, but overall not bad at all. And in fact, it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to keep this at the very top of B tier. I think it's very, very good, but I wouldn't put it in A tier. I wouldn't put it with the rest of these weapons. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, now we have the War Spear. The War Spear is very interesting because it does critical damage if there's two or more enemies you're hitting at the same time. So say you have a little mob that you're dealing with, you break out that War Spear, and you can smack enemies. And I'm going to be completely honest, I have never used the War Spear. It's existed since 1.0. I've used it in passing... Just like try it out, but I've never done a run with it. And I actually think I might try that out. But I, I'm curious to see how it does against bosses. Because I can't imagine it would do that great. But 149 DPS is not bad. 306 is insane crit, is insane crit damage. And I think that alone warrants a good ranking. But against bosses, it's a little bit of a slow combination. But I think it's good overall. Uh, and I'll, I think I'll keep this in the B tier, right above Nutcracker. And now we have four more. There's an extra giant killer on here, so four more. Um, let's talk about the Symmetrical Lance. Another melee survival weapon, and another melee survival weapon that I'm going to keep in B tier. I am going to keep it above everything else. It's above this too. It actually, War Spear should be below these two. Symmetrical Lance will get you critical hit if you hit two enemies quickly. So it's a uh, front, it's a three hit combination. So you hit an enemy, then you hit another enemy, and then you hit another enemy, and then you get your crit for six seconds. <clears throat> I don't know how I feel about that, but because six seconds is not a long time. I think if it was like 10 to 15 seconds, it would be really, really good. But six seconds is not that much in Dead Cells. But I think it is okay overall. It does a good amount of damage. The crit damage is fantastic at 251. It's one of the faster uh, melee survival uh, weapons. I have never done a full run with it, but I've used it a lot. I think it's solid in B tier. And uh, we have three weapons left. So, high boost of gauntlets. A uh, fantastic uh, melee uh, weapon. It does crits if the enemy is below 40%, so... You just got to get them to 40% and they'll start racking up those kills. And I've gotten many wins with Hayabusa Gauntlets. Um, it takes bosses to task. Like, it really does. I'm always impressed by how good it is. I It's way better than what it used to be. Which was doing a critical hit on the fifth hit. Which was okay, but not as great as it could have been. And 243 critical DPS for 40% or below, it shreds bosses, completely shreds bosses. You pair this with something like Open Wounds, and you got a, you got a machine. Um, and, you know, S-tier, easily S-tier. <laughs> like, not much else to say about that. And say the Stiletto, um, it's kind of similar. Like, you know, it's fast, gets good damage, You can, it's very easily synergized. But getting Bleed or Poison's easy. Um, 235 critical DPS for a fast weapon, absolutely fantastic. So you pair with Alchemic Carbine, Okudo's Bow, um, Cleaver, Knife Dance, um, you know, even something like a Wolf Trap with 
um, generates a toxic clouds, or any trap would generate a toxic clouds. Um, I actually got to pair this with Pyrotechnics one match, and then because my phaser had uh, poisons the enemy, shredding enemies easily. It'll one hit enemies. It's that good, um, and it's just overall fantastic. Also, it's going to be S tier, and I think it is better than Hayabusa Gauntlets because it has more uses to it. And finally, we have our boy, the Spartan Sandals. The uh, worst weapon in the game in 1.0. It was kind of it was kind of meh in 1.1. And it just kind of got better and better and better. And now here we are. 1.4. And Spartan Sandals is one of the most viable weapons in the game because of its duality function. As a secondary and as a primary weapon. So let's talk about the secondary first. Secondary weapon. What it does is you can kick enemies to a wall and then use something else to kill it. Sounds good enough. So, what can what can we use uh, at, with it as a secondary weapon? Well, we can use Valmont Whip. We can use the Impaler. We can use Shrapnel Axes. Well, maybe not. We can use Wrenching Whip. Kick them and then bring them closer to us. We can use Tentacle. Kick the enemy and then use Tentacle to uh, get the crit. I actually want to try that. I think I'm going to try that next. There's a lot of options, and as a primary weapon, uh, some of you may have seen my uh, war my war javelin Spartan sandals run. Love that run to this date. Still, a, still one of my favorite runs of all time. Um, it can I've used it with a regular old um, shield and grenades, so that was also great. And there's you know, it's kind of limited as a uh, main weapon, but it's very, very viable. It knocks out Timekeeper completely because once you pin her up against the wall, like, she can't do anything. And even Collector, like, I remember when I got my first win with Collector, for a long while, I just pinned him against the wall as part of Sounds. With Elites, it it's one of the best Elite uh, uh, weapons because the third hit, it's a three-hit combination. The third hit will always hit the enemy, regardless of who it is, whether it's a boss or lead or a regular enemy. Third kick always sends them flying that was like the big change to it and that's why it's as good as it is now and it wrecks elites completely they cannot get their ability off so overall i mean it's seen a lot of improvement and now because of all these different types of weapons out there it's uh become something that you can you know use as a assistant or you can use it as your focal point and i don't have a choice here well, I do have a choice, but I really feel strongly about this, that it should be S tier, because I, I didn't think that it was that good, but this has got to be up there. It's one of the best in the game. So I'm going to keep that in S tier. It's going to be on the low end of S tier, because I think all of these weapons are better than it, but still S tier, which is phenomenal. It jumped from E tier to S tier, like, over the course of about a year from when 1.0 was released for me. So, never thought I would see the day. But here we are. Um, so, I mean, that's it. I mean, this is our melee uh, tier list for 1.4. And even, and like I want to say, I have Meat Skewer all the way down here, right? It doesn't mean that Meat Skewer is completely unviable. All these weapons can be used to win a, ma to win a uh, run. But, you know, it's down here because when I look at this compared to other weapons, I don't like it as much. I don't think it's as good. You know, even Rapier. Like, I've seen people get wins with Rapier, and props to them, because I haven't been able to do that. I've seen people talk about how Spite Sword is incredibly good. I haven't gotten a win with Spite Sword. I don't know how good it is. I've tried, but it just didn't go well. Um, props to people who can make these builds work, and just because it's, you know, just because your favorite weapon might be, like, down here, it doesn't mean that for you it's not up here, and that's fine. Like, that's completely acceptable. Like, you know, I'm not the Council of Dead Cell tier list. You know, this is just one man's opinion. Um, this is my experience with the game and how good I think these weapons are. Um, and I really enjoyed doing this, honestly. And I'm going to be doing it for the rest of them. So ranged, shields, traps, turrets, powers, and grenades. And I'll even try to do it for mutations as well. Like, I'm... and. Maybe I'll even do a builds tier list, like ranking different builds. Like, I don't know. Like, just kind of getting creative with it. 
But that's going to be it for this particular tier list. I'm going to be uploading the rest as the days come. Um, thank you so much for uh, sticking with me over the past several minutes. Uh, I had so much fun making it. And uh, let me know uh, what you think of this list and what you would move where and why you would have them in certain places. Have a good night, everybody.